Okay, what's your name? Emily. And what year are you in? First year, well I've just done first year, so second year. And what college are you at? Fitzwilliam College, go Fitz. Yeah, <laughs> and what subject do you study? Medicine. And what course are you on? Um, the undergrad, six year course. What did you study at, like GCSE or equivalent, A-level or equivalent, and what did you get? So I grew up in Luxembourg, so what I studied at GCSE is kind of the Luxembourg system where you do all the subject sciences, but you still have a lot of languages that you haven't really chosen. Yeah. Um, but then I chose a science section, so honing in on biology, chemistry especially. But then I decided to do A levels for the last two years and did maths and the three sciences. And how did you do, like, what was your score in your Luxembourg system and your A levels? Um, in the Luxembourg system, you get an overall average. So that was 56 out of 60. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's quite a complicated system, but you just need to get that average up. Um, and then in my A levels, I got four points down. Yeah. And would you say that that academic background is quite common for Cambridge? I wouldn't say that the Luxembourgish background is common, <laughs> but that doing well consistently throughout the years is quite common. Yeah. I know some people who get into medicine through really convoluted and roundabout ways, which is great, but I also know that a lot of people have just consistently worked hard at the sciences and that's, that's just it. It's given yeah. them a solid background allowing them to tackle questions quite methodically yeah um which is something that sciences does teach you yeah i would say that keeping some literature is good because you have to do a lot of writing to get into medicine yeah and you have to do a lot of writing once you're in medicine yeah <laughs> um yeah. but i i do think sciences is a very standard route and it's helpful yeah and so when did you decide you wanted to do medicine i think it wasn't as much like a definitive decision. I would really enjoyed the sciences. I wanted to do something with that. I thought of physics, I thought of more just maths, um, but I did quite a few volunteering in like hospitals or food shelters. Um, and then I worked in a lab for a year and as a paramedic. And I just really, really enjoyed it. And I could see myself doing it um, and it, felt like all the work was worth sticking with the plan um, because medicine is such a long degree it allows you to really find your interests yeah. and there's so many parts of it that even if you feel like you might not like medicine at some point there's so many other things you can do with it yeah. so it's a really cool way to get a lot of science yeah absolutely and when you worked for a year in the lab was yeah. that on your gap year or was yeah. that yeah so that's when I'd already applied. Yeah. I'd already kind of decided based on what I liked and what I'd done and online courses. But I hadn't been able to do much in-person experience stuff because of COVID. And because I got offered a deferred entry at Cambridge, I wanted to do something worthwhile during the year. So I managed to get this spot in the lab, which was great. Um, and I really enjoyed it, but it did really show me that I liked both the research and the doing the medicine. Yeah. Um, that it, I, I don't know whether I could do just research, but in combination, that that would be good. Yeah. And then, um, so when you applied to Cambridge, talk me through what happened. So, I mean, you do your UCAS application pretty early. Yeah. Um, you have to have your personal statement ready for that point. Yeah. Um, I was quite early on it. I wrote a draft that was, according to my teachers, pretty well done already. So I didn't have to alter too much about it. Yeah. Um, but a lot of work went into that statement before they even saw it. Mm -hmm. So making sure that everything that I'd written about explained the situation, the action I took with that, yeah. the time it took me to do that and response. I think a lot of people would have heard of that, like the star yeah. format. Um, and even if it wasn't a very long paragraph about it, you know, making all of those factors in each sentence really makes it clear why you're doing medicine or why you want to do medicine. Um, and then just I submitted all of that, had my interview. I had to have the interview online to come in person again because of COVID. Um, and then heard back relatively late in February. Yeah. Um, I was in the winter pool and then got a deferred entry as well. So it was not. Planned, yeah. but it has definitely worked out. 
and the pulling is quite common. Um, people might be confused about what pulling is at Cambridge. Do you want to explain that? Yeah, so it's just a system that allows them to still look at applicants pretty specifically. So when they do, when you do the application, you apply to a college or you can have an open application. But it, what it allows them to do is each college has an admissions office. So they can really look at your application and see you at a more personal, well-rounded level. But the downside is that, say, 70 people apply to one college, but only four apply to another college, but they both have 10 spots. Mm -hmm. There might be some great applicants in that pool of 70 people. Mm -hmm. So they might get put in the pool from that college so that the other college can see them and take the opportunity to get those students. Because what they really want to do is ensure that everyone who can do well at Cambridge gets into Cambridge. Yeah. They they don't want to accept you if there's any doubts. They really want you to be able to be confident in the fact that they believe you can do the degree. Mm -hmm. And it's important because when you doubt yourself during your degree, which you will at some point. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you will. When you yeah. doubt yourself, you can then really say, no, 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 they gave me a spot. Yeah. And so it removes any of that doubt and really helps reduce the imposter, uh, imposter syndrome. Yeah. So the pooling is like their way of making applications both personal but fair. Yeah, absolutely. I think the pooling is particularly common in medicine. Yeah. And um, I don't really know why it's so common in medicine, but like, I, most of my friends at some point have been pulled in some either the winter or the summer pool. I think it's because there's so many applicants. Yeah. And no one really knows which college takes more medics. Yeah. So you you just don't yeah. know. And it fluctuates where the medics seem to apply. Yeah. Whereas like geography is very different as in a lot of geographers apply to bits. Um so you know that that's a tough battle. And yeah. you're more likely to not get a spot at Pitts, uh, at Pitts through a pooling system. Yeah. Whereas for medicine, who knows? Like, Where did you apply the first time? Mandel College, because I thought it was quite central. Yeah, no, it is, isn't it? <laughs> first year would be actually really yeah. convenient if you're at Emma, because that is literally right opposite where we yeah. are. And then what do you think the benefits are of like fits as a college for medicine versus a different college? So I think we've got a really solid super set up. So okay. Our supervisions, um, regular, helpful. We have got great supervisors. Um, and we've also got supervisors for practical MIMS. So biochemistry has a practical paper and it's the worst thing you'll it's ever a do. Very, it's a tough <laughs> paper. And a lot of colleges don't treat it as a separate subject, mm -hmm. but the way Pitts approaches it is as a separate subject. So we actually have scheduled times to go over those papers. Um, but Pitts is also great, like community-wise. It's a bit further out, so you don't get as many tourists, which is really peaceful yeah. and lovely in the summer. Yeah. And it also has great kitchens, which a lot of people don't think about, but is really helpful for budgeting because you can cook more. Yeah. I mean, if you think you'll be fighting for fridge fridge space in fits, you know, it's just, remember, it's so much better in, like than anywhere else. Yeah. Um, a lot of the colleges don't have, like, basic cooking. Yeah, we like, have ovens. Ovens. Guys. Yeah, ovens. some of them don't even have hobs. Yeah. Like, and you literally would have to make everything in a microwave. Like, yeah. 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 Okay, so medicine at Cambridge is obviously very competitive. What do you think it was about your application and what you've done and your interviews that got you in here? I think I would go back to what I said about the subjects. Um, sciences allow you to be quite, you know, like you have a certain methodology mm -hmm. except for hypothesis and you find a way to answer it. And I think that I did that throughout my application. Yeah. So even in your personal statement, when you're showing them why you should go there, you know, I've done loads of online courses, psychological first aid for children, some random like medical school course, I, you know, free stuff that I just found. I tried to like assimilate all this information. I loved listening to science podcasts, shout out to the life science of it. Um, and I just, 
through that I was able to say I really enjoy like this treatment for rheumatoid arthritis and like it's prospects yeah or, or you know, there's just a lot that you know if you had an individual interest using that to show them that that's why you're good I think was one of the biggest things and I mean the other thing was is that I think I speak quite well in interviews yeah and um I didn't seem nervous I don't think I hope yeah. I think I approached it really like okay they're gonna have a chat to me about sciences which is what everyone tells you that it, it is yeah but it's really good to remember that yeah. And even though I had a few questions about my, like, what I think a doctor needs to be like, and I think I didn't answer them as well as I could have, I always justified my answers. Yeah. And it's that, that whole process of saying, I think this because I know this, and that is why this conclusion yeah. fits. Um, and I think that is what they want to see. Because if you yeah. do that, you can assimilate the course content better. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of content and you can't just know it all. Yeah. So they want you to be able to read and understand. Yeah. But use information they give you to make a better picture. One hundred percent. I think like someone told me before my interview, like you're applying to Cambridge you'll never be the smartest, like obviously answer the questions as well as you can, but you're never going to be the smartest, but you can be the most likable and yeah. like try and be like friendly, try and like yeah. get along with them, that kind of thing in the and interview. Remember like the people who are interviewing you are usually your supervisors or yeah. somehow your tutor or your doss. So they're, they're involved in your academic career. Yeah. And they are going to have gut feeling about you. Yeah. Unfortunately, you can't change that gut feeling. Yeah. Once it's once they have that feeling, but yeah. what you can do is rock up, you know, have good posture, stand like stand there, show them why you're interested. You know, they're enthusiastic about the subject as well. Yeah. You need to show them that you're enthusiastic about the subject. Yeah. And that you would be a good person in the student community. Um, that other medics could get along with you because yeah. medicine can be a very study together subject. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you're a loner, it's not always helpful. Yeah. Um, so they just want to get an understanding of why you would fit. Yeah. Um, and if they get an like if they don't get that understanding, it's not to say that medicine isn't for you. Mm -hmm. It's just that the way Cambridge is, it's very intense. So you have to have that straightforward approach to like learning information. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, another question is like, as you know, in your interviews, often they'll ask you specifics about what is Cambridge like. Why do you want to apply to Cambridge as opposed to other places? What do you know about the course? That sort of thing. Yeah. Do you want to talk about your experience of like what you've studied this year? How a typical day looks for you? That sort of thing. Yeah, I can also say a bit about the SAQ quiz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the quiz, they give you 200 words, I think, to write about something that you can add on to your personal statement, basically. And it's a very good opportunity to use as a Cambridge student to give something specific to the Cambridge course mm -hmm. or about the uni um, because you wouldn't want to do that in your personal statement because you're applying to other universities as well. Yeah. Um, and I would definitely use that to say, like, if you've done a summer school, if you've written something involved in, like, Cambridge Press, yeah. if you've read something about the Cambridge Press, if mm -hmm. you have seen, like, interesting research come out from a Cambridge lab, they're all things where you can go, I would specifically want to go to Cambridge because I could maybe get into that lab. Yeah. I could, um, I could see the subjects. Yeah, stuff like that. And then, what was the other question? Other question was like a day in your life in oh, the first year. Yeah. <laughs> so you row. <laughs> wake up it. <laughs> um, I wake up quite early because of that, but it's all manageable and fun, and please do row. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, apply to fit. Emily will be your. I'll be there. Are you novice, novice coaching? Captain. Novice captain. Oh, it's too late for them this year, but <laughs> maybe next year. Um, so my day would begin. I would say I would push it to six o'clock. Yeah. Like. Oh if yeah. We're, if we're meeting at the boathouse at six thirty, there is no need for me to be up earlier. Yeah. Some people like to actually have a sit down breakfast beforehand, but I'm like. I don't agree with that. Doing what? I'd rather have like my stuff ready to go to have after rowing. Yeah. Um, instead of before because I just can't do that. Yeah. Before. Um, so basically get everything ready the night before, get up, get going in fifteen minutes you can be out your room and on your bike down to the boathouse. And it's a really good way to like enjoy the weather because usually it's not raining at that point. Yeah. Actually early in the morning. It's good weather. It's good weather. Yeah. And then at ten o'clock the rain will just hit and yeah. you'll be like, where did the day go? Yeah. Um, but from that, you usually go to lectures, then depending on the day, I might have a practical in the human anatomy center um, where we do dissection, which is a fantastic thing that Cambridge still does. Um, back to lecture, Yeah. <laughs> back to another practical after lunch. Um, and then maybe from there, either straight to another rowing session, yeah. um, straight to weights, um, straight to Audi to go shop. Like yeah. I definitely try and tie stuff in to like one journey, so I'm not making multiple bike trips. And relax a bit, do some work in the evening, yeah. maybe have a supervision. Yeah. Our supervisions are at any hour of the day, basically. Yeah. And you've really got to appreciate the effort that supervisors put in as researchers or doctors themselves to come and teach you yeah but it does mean that you will learn to work at late hours sometimes yeah and um that that's then how the day finishes what time do you go to bed i often try to at least like wind it down around 10. yeah um i don't want to be doing something that will get me more like involved yeah past 10 yeah but i am often awake until 11 so like that yeah. last hour is kind of an either social hour as in slowly like just chatting in the kitchen yeah. getting my stuff ready for the next day or it's a i'm just lying on my bed doing nothing yeah sometimes i try and do emails at that time it's quite good to do like tedious admin yeah later because your brain's off but you're still yeah working so you don't use your your energetic hours yeah for emails how many now that i'm done it first year so yeah. long ago it feels like i can't actually remember it. how many lectures a week did you have roughly i would say eight eight lectures a week eight, nine. and then it does really depend because at some point you have some subjects and then you don't have them anymore because yeah. you do the exam earlier on in the year. Yeah. Um, I would say eight, nine. And then how many supervisions do you have a week? By the way, lectures are about an hour. Yeah. 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 Um, fit supervisions. So we have one in anatomy each week, one in physiology, one in biochemistry. And then we have ones that are kind of every second week. So... I would say five, six. It would. I've had a week with eight. Yeah. Um. That's just how it is. Yeah. I've had double supos as well, where yeah. the supervision was two hours. Yeah. And I've had a day like Saturday morning with three in a row. Yeah. Um. But I would say on average five. Six. And then they're normally about an hour. Yeah. yeah. Fine. And then how many like practicals? And stuff do you have a week it does vary but you have basically alternating a histology practical or a physiology practical yeah so that's two hours or three hours depending on the practical yeah each week you have two lots of sessions in the dissection room yeah so that's four hours um the way the dissection stuff works is you get a group. It's quite stressful at the beginning knowing which group you're in and yeah. there's a lot of information. Yeah. Um, but you get there and you either, so you have dissection, say you're the group 
a you'll have their section on monday and thursday so 10 to 12 both times the dissection will be like one hour of that two hour block and the other hour is either the annex or applied anatomy and so the annex is where there's like different stations and you you really have the opportunity to learn through different ways so if you learn really well through like picking stuff up there's like an osteology station where you can literally pick up the bone mm -hmm. um, and find all the nodules where muscles insert and stuff um, but they also have properly done pro sections so yeah. if you happen to which there's no judgment accidentally cut something in yes. the dissection room <laughs> Um, you know, you're all learning and it, that's fine, but unfortunately you sometimes don't get to see what you're meant to see. Yeah. And the pro sections are a really good way to like see beautifully done anatomy, yeah. like really amazingly prepared um, and they're very delicate. Um, you learn so much from them. So you go through these different stations and then the, if it's not your annex day and it's your applied anatomy day, then <laughs> if it's your applied anatomy day, then you go through the clinical cases, and they have made it more relevant. Um, however, that's a big, like, stressy kind of situation. Yeah. Um, because there's so much to get through in an hour, because in yeah. the cases are actually not quite complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then the way they do it at Cambridge. Yeah. So. Cambridge, and they're actually doing a review of how they're teaching stuff at the moment because the GMC tells them they have to do a review, but also they know that like if they want to be the top uni, yeah. you know, there's only so much relying on the students being great. Yeah. Like <laughs> they have to keep up with the best ways to learn and yeah. what to do. But what they do is you learn like your upper limb, you learn your thorax, then your abdomen, and then your lower limb. And instead of learning by a system, so you don't learn the nervous system, um, you can have like an introductory lecture on the nervous system, but it's up to you to link it all together when you learn the region. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that linking, you, you actually have very limited knowledge to like specific regions, but you don't actually know where the structures then run. So that would be the thing you then have to work on later in life as a doctor yeah. or if you want to be a surgeon yeah. you definitely have to work on it because you need to know how it all relates the whole way along the structure yeah. not just like in a specific region around the elbow mm. um, and so Cambridge is trying to address that however the benefit of that is you do learn the systems multiple times over yeah. and you learn a lot about them in a lot of detail mm -hmm. because you really focus in on specific areas yeah. and so you get an understanding of how there's a lot that can be going on in one area and damaging one little thing can be really really easy yeah. um, and go wrong very quickly. Yeah. It also allows you to have um, quite defined revision. Yeah which although may seem like a minor point, it's quite helpful to be able to say like, I'm going to cover the upper limb. 1.1, 1. 1. Yeah. 1.2. <laughs> I'm going to cover the thorax. Yeah. Um, and not always have to link everything into a massive picture. Yeah. But it does mean that that linking job is left to you later on. Question I have for you is, do you use Anki or what do you use as your... So I did use Anki, but I didn't make my own deck. Okay. I don't know whether that was the best way. Yeah. I was very persuaded when I started uni to try different learning methods, yeah. even though I believed that I'd done really well in A-levels with yeah. what I'd done. Yeah. You were just told, try new things. Yeah. And I don't think that it worked for me to like completely uproot how I did stuff, Yeah. especially typing notes. It just didn't work. No, I don't like typing I either. could only annotate notes. And so in the end, I had a massive like, panic yeah i was like i'm printing stuff out now yeah same um, yeah so that's what i'm at printing but, credit minus 500 pounds yes, yeah yeah yes. um but so it's you, worked and i passed you just I, print annotate and learn print, pre-read it annotate and the 
printing made me keep on top of things yeah. because I have to have printed it before I go to the lecture. Yeah. Um, whereas when you're downloading a PDF, it can really quickly just slip into downloading the PDF as you sit down yeah. rather than actually doing your part of the job, which is rereading um, the lecture. Yeah. What is your favourite thing or favourite subject at Cambridge? Best thing about medicine? Best thing about medicine, I did really love the dissections. Yeah. Um, it felt so hands-on when you're learning so much theory. Yeah. Um, it was just done really well. Yeah. Really well. It's not everyone's piece of cake, but I really learned a lot through it because you can just see what you're studying. Yeah. Um, and that's really fun. Um, my least favourite part, I know you didn't ask for it, um, but I would like to say it because it's a real story of not enjoying and then learning to enjoy it more. Yeah. It's histology. Oh, yeah. 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 It, they, they don't teach it in a very engaging They don't teach it full stop. Way. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite, it's very much your job. Yeah. And then you just look at slides and you don't see the stuff because you don't know. You know? Yeah. These are people trying to explain their genius to you yeah and they recognize different cells with an instant yeah but you having never looked at cells with all the different dyes yeah. and everything you just don't know what's going on yeah and it, it was horrible but then when I actually like crash coursed it before the revision session yeah um, to study because uh, we have an obligatory revision session at yeah. Cambridge. Yeah. Um, before, when I crash coursed it before then, because I was like, there's no point going to the session if I've not revised. Um, I understood what they were trying to get us to know, yeah. which helped me understand it more. And then I did really well in histology. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, So really. it's definitely one of those subjects that, like, stick with it. Yeah. You don't have to do it throughout the year devotedly. Yeah. But if you crash course it to give yourself like an overview of what am I looking at and yeah. you start seeing the cells, you start seeing stuff. <laughs> yeah. I have another tip for them, which is um, the Human Tissue Act means that they can only use so many images. <laughs> yeah. So memorize the images that yeah. you've already seen because there is very good odds that they are going to come up again. Yeah. Last question. Do you have any tips for anyone applying to Cambridge Medicine? Um, definitely do the online courses if you can't do stuff in person. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be something that costs money and you don't have to pay for the certificate because Cambridge don't care. Yeah. If you tell them that you've done the free online course and talk to them about something you found interesting in it, they're far more interested in that yeah. than whether you actually did the course. Yeah. It's not as if you send in these certificates to get UCAS points because a lot of them aren't even recognised by a UCAS that way. Yeah. Um, so that would be my one really big thing. My second thing is just be really calm in the interview. You know, they want to see whether you can be a doctor. Doctors should be calm. Yeah. Um, there is at no point where doctors should be more stressed than the patient. Yeah. <laughs> However, you know, we all know that that can happen yeah. and yeah. probably will happen to all yeah. of us um, but you should at least be trying to manage it yeah and so one of the big things is can you still think and use your brain when you're stressed yeah because your heart is pumping in that interview yeah. you are thinking like how can I answer this really really well and the best thing to do is to just voice your thoughts yeah one by one you know say I think this because and that, that's just really my like key tip. Yeah. Voice everything you're thinking because then they can like lead you in the right direction. Yeah. They will literally help you answer the questions if they know what you're thinking. Yeah. If they have no clue and you're silent, they cannot give you a tip. They yeah. cannot be like, have you thought about this? Because they they literally don't know. Yeah. And um, that would be my other big thing. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Oh, no, no, go, go, go. And finally, just, just do the work. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's so worth it. It's so worth the community you get out yeah. of Cambridge. It's a really intense but amazing time. So we really want everyone to get in. Yeah. Not everyone will get in. Yeah. So just do the work. Yeah. Just do the extra reading. Yeah. Listen to a podcast. You know, write about something you like so that 
you have an interest and a passion in your subject. Yeah. Um, and then they'll see that and it'll be great. Yeah, thank you. Emily is back for some bonus content. <laughs> She's going to tell us all the really cool things that she did and wrote in her personal statement. Yeah. You can just spam them off if you want. Okay, I think I'll just start with like what I started first. Yeah. So I started ballet when I was three. Yep. Shout out to the RAD system. Yep. Um, and I really stuck with that. I absolutely love it. And it opens so many different avenues in dancing. Um, so I did all my exams in that. And um, yeah, that was a really great thing because I think Cambridge, although they say they don't want to admit people based on sporting achievements, they do like when you stuck with something and really showing that like you can do it for a long period of time. Yeah. Especially for medicine because yeah. that's what medicine is. Yeah. A long period of time. Um, you will devote your life to it. I yeah. Think. 